We are continuing our discussion on deriving the pendulum equation. In the previous video, I think it was video number 21, we had derived this equation and now we want to determine what is the constant of integration here. Um, the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org. Now, let's consider Here's the pendulum, and let's say that when it gets to this part of the arc, that that is its maximum angular displacement. So it's going to swing up to here, reach not just theta, but that'll be theta m. So it goes to here, reaches maximum theta, then it stops, then it swings back down and goes in the other direction. So the point, though, is that when we have the maximum displacement, theta m, let's say for theta m, that's the maximum displacement, then theta dot m equals zero. And again, that's because The pendulum goes to here, makes its maximum displacement, then it stops and swings in the other direction. So when it stops, of course, the angular velocity is zero. So now we have then, putting that into here, we would have one half theta dot m squared equals g over l times the cosine of theta maximum plus a constant. And as we said, this is zero. So then we see that the constant of integration equals minus g over l times the cosine of theta m. So you can put that up into here this is minus g over l cosine theta m. So now we have so there is our pendulum equation once we've determined what the constant of integration is. Now notice that if the maximum displacement was 90 degrees, so we had it all the way up to here, then of course the integration constant would be zero because the cosine of pi over 2 was zero. But anything else then we're going to have this term. So here then is our pendulum equation. After we have determined the uh, uh, the constant of integration. So let's see we have we can factor this out we'll multiply both sides of the equation by 2 so we'll have theta dot squared will equal 2g over L times the cosine of theta minus the cosine of theta maximum. Or this is d theta dt. Take the square root now of both sides and we'll have d theta dt equals the square root of 2g over L times the square root of the cosine of theta minus the cosine of theta maximum. Or let's multiply now both sides of the equation by dt. 
I'll cancel this. And then we can divide by this. So we'll have this, the square root of 2g over L dt. That will equal d theta divided by the square root, the cosine of theta, minus the cosine of theta maximum. So we have that kind of equation. Now, remember what is happening here. We're considering up to the maximum displacement theta here. Let's do it like this. We are integrating this, starting from theta, and then going to theta maximum. Now here then, we're on this side of the equation. We have it like this. And actually, we're starting here where theta equals 0, then going up to theta maximum. So let's say theta equals 0, then going up to where theta equals theta maximum. When that equals 0, t equals 0. But now, when it goes here, and we have theta maximum, let's think about what is happening. Let's say we're here, then it goes to here, then it comes back to here, goes in the opposite direction for an angular displacement up to theta m, then comes back to here. So when we go from here to theta maximum, that's only one-fourth of the cycle. Goes to here, then back to here, that's one-half the cycle, then over to here, that's three-quarters of the cycle, then back down to here to complete the entire cycle. So when it goes from here up to here, the amount of, t well, when it goes from here to here, back to here, up to here, it comes back down to complete the cycle, the amount of time required to do that is capital T, that's the period. When it goes from here to here, that's only one-fourth the cycle, so the amount of time is the period, capital T, divided by four. So this upper limit here would be capital T, the period, divided by 4. So on this side of the e equation, what we're going to get is, or let's do it like this. This is getting a little bit messy. Let's write this. We have this integral going from 0 to theta maximum. d theta divided by the square root cosine of theta minus the cosine of theta maximum. And that will equal, from this integral here, we have the square root of 2g over l. And this is just going to be t going from t over 4, capital T over 4, to 0. So that's just going to be capital T over 4. So this finally is, this is our final equation then that we have to solve for our pendulum problem. And if we can solve it, then we will have a solution for the pendulum problem, not just for very small angular displacements, but for all angular displacements. And what we'll do in the next video, then, is see how we solve the strategy for solving this equation. This actually involves elliptic integrals. And if you go to the website at digital-university.org and click where it says free calculus videos, then scroll down to where it says integral functions. You see we have um, 
videos dealing with the gamma function, the beta function, and after that with elliptic functions. And we're going to use the knowledge from those videos in that series to solve this equation. And that then we'll tackle in the next video that's coming up shortly.